Mr. Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative Perry. I, you know what, I have to say it was quite difficult to listen to you, not because you're not articulate, but these stories are horrific. And I just want to say thank you on a bipartisan basis that we can address this horrible, horrible situation. So I'm rising here today and I'm joining, of course, Representative Perry on International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. And I want to say that every girl, no matter where she is born, she has a right to live free of violence. When women and girls are empowered, when they're provided access to quality health care and education, communities thrive. In fact, the best predictor of a country's peacefulness is how well its women are treated. Uplifting the value of women around the world is an American value that must continue. And still, there are horrific norms and culture practices like female genital mutilation, or what we call it FGM in short. And it's holding back women from reading, reaching their full potential. Uh, Representative Perry, I actually uh, met uh, a victim of this very, very cruel act last year. She came to a, uh, a panel discussion. Her name was Jaha, young woman from Gambia. And she told us that uh, at, when she was actually at, born, when she was one week old, she was mutilated. And that at age 15, she was married off. And she told us, this is very common. It's happening to something like 200 million women today. Now, Jaha, she was, she, I, I just say she's a champion because she broke away, she broke away from her marriage and she became a champion advocate to, because she's do, for her daughter, for her daughter. Uh, she became an advocate and through her advocacy, FGM is now banned in Gambia. So she has shown us that it can be done. 200 million girls and women today have been cut, leaving them with irreversible emotional and physical damage, which can lead to infection, severe bleeding, complications in childbirth, and increased risk of newborn death. It's horrific, it's humane, and it is a gross violation of human rights. And it's not tied to just one religion or culture. It can happen anywhere, and it is unbelievable to say that it still happens in the United States of America, as you so, uh, aptly po pointed out. So I'm very happy to be here with you. In fact, I'm very proud to be here with you uh, to just send a clear message that FGM is unacceptable, it must stop, and I'm so pleased to join you in all your efforts our joint efforts to stop this pra practice. And I, I, I do, I want to add something, I, and I do think we can also, the United States, there's more that we can do uh, in terms of resources. Uh, at least $15 million uh, is needed annually to continue our efforts. Uh, I would like to see us put into, the law, to, into law the U.S. strategies to prevent and respond to gender-based violence globally and to empower adolescent girls, uh, and recognizing that FGM is a gender-based violence. And as importantly, we must, we must restore our funding to the U.N. Population Fund, which is providing care to two million survivors around the world. It is time we recommit to ensuring the safety, empowerment of women and girls. And I know, Representative Perry, you would join me in saying that when women succeed, so does the world. Sure. And I yield back.